In this month's edition of our Brand Identity Review, we're going to explore some brilliant executions, quirky approaches, and some high-profile rebrands for names like the BBC and Facebook. Let's go. Hello friends, welcome back to Flux where we talk design and freelancing. My name is Matt Brunton and today I've got five recently released brand identity projects. And first of all, we're going to Chicago, Illinois. This is one design company and this is their rebrand of Flex, which is a logistics tech company. Now this company was known as a warehousing company. You can see the old logo in blue here and it kind of looks like a building and they wanted to let people know that they were much more and they had real innovative tech solutions that would help their customers and their research turned up a lot of this blue colors and sans serif fonts we see this thing a lot within uh, tech and what they have done is something much more elegant we have a lot of this drone photography and this lovely serif face that they've chosen for these headlines you can see here on this outdoor poster where it says omnichannel logistics programs and a black and white color scheme has been leaned on as well some some really kind of rich colors as well in there you can see here these olives and these burgundy we'll see a little bit more of it later and by using these uh, very careful layouts like you can see this looks like a powerpoint or a brochure or something like that it really elevates it warehousing can be a little bit cheap and cheerful and this is something that looks much more refined you can see in these business cards and other stationary items i believe the lines are supposed to symbolize like logistics and movement and that kind of thing and it is as i say very refined i like the color palette i like the richness i like that they're bringing in more than black and white to make it flexible uh, but that is the primary colors that they use and it really works well for me apparently it's things from the world of logistics but i just think it's works with the refined feel that they want and i like this word mark it's a good example of how if you just choose a really great font and then customize it a little bit like they've done by drawing this custom x that can be enough to create a word mark that works and works really hard for you within an identity so great example of that Great work here from One Design. The next project is totally different. This is for La Puz, who are a jigsaw puzzle company inspired by vintage puzzles. So this has got like a 70s and 80s feel that we're gonna see. So I'm gonna kind of scroll through this a little bit and just take you down to the main art direction and feel. You can see these sticker packs and we're getting this quirky feel, which is what they want to convey it says it right there in the copy but with the art direction with the colors with the maximalist kind of approach there's no white space here we're just filling everything it really gives this whole feel now this is one in particular let me just pause for a minute that feel doesn't work because it's too contrived like why would you place a single cherry on top of a pile of jigsaw puzzles it's a bit too odd that so I think things still have to make sense to a degree within the context but the key thing when you're designing a whole identity is you want to create a world for the brand and then ask what fits within that world and what doesn't and they've done a great job here down to the clothes people are wearing like the denim you can see through a glass coffee table the accessories that are in the shots the old packaging and kitchen appliances They've really done a good job here, corded phones and the whole uh, color treatment as well. The way these photographs have been graded, it all fits this 80s, 70s to 80s aesthetic. It's like when I grew up, I love this. So it's a great uh, feel. It kind of feels like cereal boxes. I think they mentioned old video games and everything belongs. Look at this with the makeup and they've done this mask with like a feathered edge. It's so retro. So well done for creating this whole world doing something quirky doing something a little bit different stretched fonts kind of make me a little bit sick so I struggle a little bit with some of that but it definitely evokes a whole feel so kudos to lt for that 
The next project is a high profile one and that's for the BBC. So the BBC have revealed their new logos which we can see in this news article. And what you see here in the middle is their new cipher, I believe it's called, if you use initials for a logo, that's a cipher. And they've not changed it terribly. Before you might recall this, it was Jill Sands, totally ubiquitous font in these squares. Now the squares are spaced a little bit further apart and the type is their own wreath font, which has been designed for the corporation. Now the BBC, I'm in Britain and the British Broadcasting Corporation is very well known. Everyone has an opinion on it. It's part of our shared cultural life. And I'm sure most people watching this video around the world have at least heard of the BBC, but it means a lot to people in Britain. Everyone has an opinion on it. So of course, when they released these logos, everyone had an opinion on them. And the thing they did was launch it very poorly. So you can see here it's in these news article. The change of the cipher, okay, it's not a huge change. It's no real big deal. But they've, they've created a suite of logos that are all now the same. They're all within a style. And they all use rectangles. So iPlayer is the streaming service. Sounds is the radio and podcast the audio service, sport is sports journalism, weather, and bite size, which is education for children. And they all use rectangles and these colors, which are kind of carry over from the old brands, but there's not a lot to them. And there's that whole saying of make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. And have they maybe gone too simple here so there's not enough distinctiveness there and there's not enough beauty within these logos you know Dieter Rams I'm a big fan of his work as a product designer he says less but better so it's not just reducing things until they become unusable or not beautiful it's less it's stripping out what's unnecessary but leaving some what is essential and maybe they've gone too far but it's hard to tell because that's it really all we have here is these very flat looking mock-ups of their idents for some of the television channels and that's it and even on their own website they talk about the fact that this uh, style has been sent up by a mockumentary on the BBC in 2014. So people on Twitter are kind of already critiquing these logos. And the problem is, this is giving us a bad name. So whenever a high profile logo is released in a poor manner like this, people bring up the same old lines about, my child could have done this, or how much money did they spend on this? What a waste. And they're not really appreciating or selling what identity designers actually do. So you have to bring the applications, the case study, to show it in context and explain the reasons for the change and explain how it works. And I'm sure that, that when this is animated, they actually mention that they've created a whole new user interface for iPlayer. Well, show it. Let us know. Show the before. Show the after. Show why the UX has been improved. And there would be a lot more justification behind this process rather than what the general public see, which is a few rectangles. So that's how not to present your work. Similarly, maybe with our fourth of these five brands, it's the new brand for Facebook, the corporation, and they've changed their name to Meta. So Facebook, the app remains, but the corporation, which includes Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, Oculus, I think that's most of the big brands, is now called Meta, and they've revealed this new brand. So we have this symbol, which kind of looks like an infinity symbol, that's been shifted slightly to resemble an M and the word mark complements it to this combination mark here that we see. And I think this is fine. I quite like this uh, type. I'm not sure is the M a bit wide compared. Overall though, I think this is pretty solid. It's a solid mark because you have the infinity symbol and the M and it works well flat. It looks nice animated as we can see here. They're showing how all their uh, apps come under this one. So that's a, a good way to communicate, like in just a few seconds, what the company's about. You'd expect something at this level to be executed well. You can see here in 3D, it's supposed to be all about the metaverse. So apparently this 
is because this is augmented reality and all that. So who's ready for the metaverse? What do we think? Bright future or dystopian nightmare? Not sure yet. But these guys are building it. And I think these applications here are a little bit strange. They seem arbitrary. Why have we got these different textures here? These blocks and this shiny. I'm not really sure what this is for. It just seems like arbitrary. Like let's throw some textures into it, into a 3D program. Again, they're not showing the work in context, which is so important. And I think really something at this scale, one of the biggest companies in the world, they should be doing better at telling the story. I think even the kerning, let's get really picky. Here, when we see the inverse on the sign, it looks great. It's very tight. But when you have dark on light as opposed to light on dark backgrounds these spaces optically look a little bit wider and i think this m and e could be a little bit closer together based on how the rest of it is kerned splitting hairs maybe we can argue about kerning all day right but overall i think they need to show more applications and more of the working context these posters are just generic and they don't really mean anything but in terms of it as a combination mark logo I think it's pretty good. Okay, finally, let's see how you do a case study properly. This is for Hotjar, which is a website analytics platform. You're probably familiar with it. I know there's a lot of web designers here on Flux, and it helps you analyze how users are actually using your site. So it's a tech startup. It's in that world, very technical. And let's just have a look at the before and after for the logos it's definitely improved in my view the before looked kind of portly these sort of fat letters with these rounded corners it's not very attractive to me i think it's kind of an ugly typeface it's been said uh, in some of these reviews that the old flame kind of looked like tinder i don't know about that i was happily married before tinder came along but they needed to get something more distinctive so i definitely think it's an improvement and They've really elevated the whole brand, even the website, if you can remember the whole Hotjar website or maybe go on Wayback Machine and have a look. It wasn't very attractive. And what we've got now is something far better. So this is a, is a flame, the new symbol. I also think it looks kind of like a jar, you know, like a vase. So it kind of communicates both. I don't know if that was on purpose, but they've also introduced this new color scheme, which is based on flames. So obviously as flames get hotter, we've got these sort of blue colors, as well as the traditional sort of yellow, orange, red that you often see in fire. So it's good that they've introduced some of these purples, these light blues. I think that makes it much more distinctive than just having red and orange. So this color palette works well. I do like the typeface they've chosen. I won't labor the point on that, but it definitely has some distinctiveness while still being a really legible typeface. The next asset is these lines. Now, apparently this is kind of like how people trace through a website, I guess like a, a mouse or as you move through the stages um, and they've got the part of Hot Jars whole interface their whole way of expressing the heat maps that's the word i'm looking for of the site they've used that as gradients within this and i know this kind of radial gradients is a bit overdone now as a trend but as the heat map thing is intrinsic to hot jar i think they can get away with using it and they've got a heat blur photography so they've kind of blurred and shifted kind of the uh, the focus in these elements so these are the elements that make up the brand these are the ingredients so we can see here some of the applications but what i think they've done well is they've shown the real applications yes there's some posters some merch some outdoor because we all know that stuff looks great but they've mainly shown the website and they've shown social media they've shown the work in context maybe facebook and the bbc should have done that in fact of course they should and this website is much more attractive now. They've got this new dark mode. It's legible, just solid use of grids and hierarchy that make it work. You can see here how they were developing the website. I love this within a case study from content maps to wireframes to the final layout. That's really good information that we can learn best practices from as designers. And uh, here more outdoor work. Again, we've got the wavy people. You see them in all the 
tech companies, don't you? These rudimentally drawn people with the wavy hair and the solid colors. That I think that trend's going to die out soon. There's a lot of it here, but the color scheme is nice and it works well and I feel it's distinctive enough. So I do like that and the gradients lend it more distinctiveness. These applications are great finally because this is Instagram. So this is actually in context and these layouts work well and you can see that it's really strong rather than just throwing it onto, you know, a water bottle and a tote bag. This works well in context and it gives it an attractive and distinctive look. Oh, but we do have the merch. Come on. You've got to throw it in there. And I'm sure the company employees will be so glad to <laughs> get these in the post. This here, we're getting a bit generic with these gestures. I think, what does this really mean? You see this on the side of a building? Doesn't really say anything. But overall, these in-context applications like the Instagram, like the website, really show off what this brand is all about. Hope these inspired you and let you know about some best practices and maybe a little bit what not to do. We're building up a great library here of these review videos. So check out Rand's website reviews, my brand identity reviews here on the channel and we'll speak to you soon.